she was in the scene and Drew Barrymore was in the scene and I got to come into the closet. <laughs> and you got to be in the closet with Drew Barrymore. I went in the closet <laughs> with Drew Barrymore and Winnie McClendon coming. <laughs> And welcome to Kelly, where we talk about life, your life and my life. And through Kelly, we hope to inspire. I have Jackie Golston on the show today. And Jackie is an actress. And she also does headshots for a lot of the um, actors here in Atlanta. So I do want to hit on headshots. But first, we're going to talk about um, the show that's on right now, The Passage. And you played uh, the evil foster mom. Yes, awful foster mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and it aired on uh, January the 14th. Were 14th. you in that? You were in that episode? The pilot episode, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. How was that? Uh, it, it turned out great. I was so afraid they were going to put me on the cutting room floor, but I, I made it. <laughs> and you said they like greased up your hair. And, they like... did. They did. It was really funny because they said, well, what did you do for your audition? I said, I rolled out of bed and went <laughs> and looked no makeup, you know. Um, I had clean hair then, but they came in with the makeup person and they dirtied up my hair. You know, they put that um, powdery dirt stuff in your hair. Uh -huh. and, made it all greasy and gooky looking and it doesn't look that bad on TV but but in in person in it, person it was just nasty <laughs> i mean trying to go eh, eh, afterwards eh, you know? <laughs> The things we actors do. <laughs> so, so Jackie, also, um, you have a cute little story about Drew Barrymore in um, Blended. It Blended, where you were in the closet with her. So, will you share that? I, I love, I love stories like that. So, uh, Wendy McClendon Covey, who is also on The Goldbergs. I don't know if y'all are familiar with uh -huh. that show. She's huge now, but um, not huge, but she's a big girl. I'm, yeah. Well, anyway, she 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 climbed the ladder. Very, yeah. She did. Um, she's she was in the scene, and Drew Barrymore was in the scene, and I got to come into the closet. And you got to be in the closet with Drew Barrymore. I went in the closet <laughs> with Drew Barrymore and Winnie McClendon coming. You never know. I, I'm sure when you when you go in the we closet, we eventually with, all came out exactly. of exactly when you go in the closet <laughs> with Drew Barrymore. I don't know that you come out the same. I, yeah. I don't. I don't imagine that you can. No. <laughs> it was like the third or fourth take, and it finally caught our funny bone, and she just laughed her head off when I said my line because you know it was just. Oh, so that's why they call you closet queens, you know. It's, it's the whole coming in and out of the closet theme, you know, yeah. to stay there. It was, they were great to work So with. let's talk yeah. about being an actress and um, as far as, you know, uh, we represent Atlanta. Yes. So where we're at, um, you and I, I've kn I think I've known you about seven years now. We met on a on an independent film and yes. you actually took my role. I, they, and they did not, I don't know did if you they? remember, but they did not tell me. I like showed up. I didn't up. know that. Well, they didn't realize I had braces on at the time, and it was it was the doctor. Yes, and, yes, yes. And I remember coming in, and they did not tell me that they had. Oh, girl. So I ended up coaching, you know, for the no. <laughs> Trust me, you looked better in it. I didn't look like a doctor. <laughs> but um, but anyway, I ended up helping them them coach during the. Uh, it was called the Cure. Yes. Um, but um, so. The industry, how the industry is growing, and we have work here. We do. And it's amazing. It is. And fun. It's so much fun. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And you're signed with Jana Van Dyke. I am. She has a lot of our, um, she, she has a handful of our students too. I love Jana. Yes. Um, you know, what has, what have you put into this career? That's what I want people to understand, you know, what, what you put in to have what you have and right. to be able to do what you do. So. I actually studied this in college. A lot of people told me that was a foolish choice. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I sometimes tell people the same thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, I have fully thrown myself into acting. Mm -hmm. That's what I did in college. After college, I produced uh, with uh, churches, schools. I taught at schools. The biggest thing for me was education. Uh, my mother and father really pounded education into me. They did never, they did never, they did never. <laughs> that was the education right there. That was the education coming out. <laughs> they never wanted me to be a waitress. I could never understand that. Well, why not, you know? And Well, because you can always do something else. So there was a statistic that I read, and I thought it was really interesting, 10,000 hours to become a master. Right, right. So your viewers and uh, students are very smart. I'm sure they can do the math. If you take one class for one hour mm -hmm. every week, 
that's going to be over a lifetime to get to that yeah. point. Yeah. If you take two hours a mm -hmm. week, it's still going to be over a lifetime to get to that point. You have to throw yourself into this, do this constantly. I have my own taping studio. I cold read with actors every single day. I'm mm -hmm. always, always, always in a script. I've mm -hmm. always been in a script right. my whole life. I've done theater, which helps the memory tool as well. It's, it's all those muscles, the memory muscles, the um, finding the beats muscles, the objectives, the, yeah. you know, all that breakdowny stuff that you learn in the beginning. Uh -huh. It kind of just kind of flows away as you learn it and, and become part of it. But it, it's so when it becomes, when it really becomes your life and, and me owning a studio and I'm, I'm working with people all the time, like, like you were saying, and you, uh, you, you start seeing the rhythms and the patterns and the, the beats and the, you start seeing the flow. Yes. Of, of things as an artist. Absolutely. But you, you're not an artist in the beginning. Right. You know, in the beginning, you're now, now you're like me. I've done theater. I mean, my, my first theater production, I was in third grade. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what life was like without. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's interesting when you, when you work with people, like being part of an acting studio, I work with people that are completely green. Yes. Totally green. I mean, yes. they've never even been on stage before, and you're trying to teach them all of these, all of this dynamics, and then they think they they want to get signed with an agent within six months, yes. and it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, I've mentored a lot of people who have tried to do the same thing, and mm -hmm. it, it really doesn't work like that, especially now in the Atlanta. We've become such a huge force in the industry. Um, we have LA and New York standards here now, right? And there's no agent that's going to take you without a reel, and especially without a reel that has good chops on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just, I mean, you don't obviously you, you're not going to be able to get something like um, a, a network mm -hmm, something on there mm -hmm. without an agent, but good independent chops. It has to look good, sound good, all of those things put together. And a lot of us, when we self-produce, it just looks bad. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. <laughs> so it takes a long time to find something that really looks good. Well, and it's really and hard. to get our... our well, uh, and the thing is, in the, in the very beginning, you've just got to get around people and people who are doing things. And again, it's normally not exactly. the best quality. So your exactly. first two years, you're not even going to normally... I, I do have a couple of students that have booked some really, really good things in the beginning of their careers, but they're children. Yes, um, that's that's very different. Right. Yes. But for, for the most of us, we're going to get into independent films. They're going to be new filmmakers who haven't really learned their craft yet. Right. And everybody's kind of learned... That's not a bad thing. It's just okay. that you've got to keep moving. You know, one thing introduces you to another thing. Another thing introduces you to another thing. Exactly. And you're not going to have what somebody has, somebody who's been in for 10 years, even if they've been doing theater productions, you're not going to have what they're going to have exactly. 10,000 hours. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's, talk, let's hit on head, headshots for a moment because okay. you do wonderful, amazing headshots. As far as an actor with headshots, what are you looking for as as a photographer? As a photographer, I look for the actor to be completely prepared. They need to have biggest, one of my pet peeves is they come in with wrinkled clothes, they come in with flaky skin. Right, right. You know, they need to, they need to be prepared, like they're gonna be on a set. Right. Um, their clothes need to be pressed, free of lint. <laughs> the retouching that takes place sometimes is ridiculous, right. um, and I do that as well, but I, I do retouch as little as possible. Um, because you want the natural. Yes, you do. I have scars on my face. Mm -hmm. I don't retouch those out. Right. I do not touch those. No, it can book If stuff. I have a pimple, then I'll retouch that because <laughs> that'll go away. <laughs> right, right, right. But, uh, yeah, you want to be, a, you want to show exactly what you, what you are. Yeah. And I've heard horror stories of one CD who uh, took, she was Lori Wyman in Florida. She took a uh, actor just off his headshots, called him in, and when he came in, uh, his headshots were looking like this. Uh huh. And when he came in, he had a huge birthmark over here. He was hiding it. He was hiding it. Oh. And she literally just let him have it. it, which, you know, Mm, eek, oh, eek. Yeah. But she said, don't ever come back again. You you falsely represented yourself. And that's exactly what right. we were doing when we were retouching so much. Wow, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, yes. yeah. You want to show your essence and your, and then you want to show the characters that you can play, what falls in your, in yes. your wheelhouse. They need to be able to see that in your, 
in your headshots um, yes. I have for you. Just a oh, gift. Oh, you're Some so chocolates. Sweet. Um, Who you doesn't can, love chocolate? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like them a little too much. <laughs> but it, it's to remind you that you're a gift, and I, I, I love you because you're always willing to give back to people and to help That's educate. Sweet. And it really, you know, the first bulk of us that, that – we're here in Atlanta when the when the industry that's what we've yes. become we've become educators yes because we've absolutely. been through you know we're, we not only have we been through the meadow we've helped mm -hmm. develop develop the meadow absolutely and even though I do come from California there's uh -huh. a lot of people coming from LA who think okay I'm gonna come and tell them what I know and what they're supposed it's a different to know market. it's very different uh -huh. and they're learning very quickly right that the market is oh eek yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna do this but now I can't do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of cute. <laughs> but uh, you're a gift also. So oh, thank you. I brought you some little goodies that oh, I like. Oh, okay. I don't know if um, I will like them. You'll too. like all of them or not. Oh, look. There's one. Yeah, that one you may not like. Oh, do, do you do you do you sell these or? Oh, heck you, no. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know. Oh no. These no, are no. just things that you. Yeah. Okay. And it's awesome. not product placement. It's either. not product placement. Um, yes. <laughs> But oh. that's that's a alkaline decaf coffee. Awesome. And it's the only one on the market. Okay. Because I want to stay alkaline with my body yeah, and yeah, keep yeah. me healthy. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's it's all about diet. And these are, like, they're seaweed. You're going to share them with a friend because then you'll both smell fishy. Uh, <laughs> if you guys want to yeah. look as marvelous as Jackie, use, her, <laughs> you, use, use the products that are not endorsed. <laughs> <laughs> that are endorsed by her, but not by, by product placement. Okay, awesome. Um, some some uh, advice to give to to an actor. To any actor. Any actor. Keep on. Don't give up. Don't give up. If you really want this, you can get it, but you have to give it your all. Don't give up. Find something to make money. It's not a plan B, and it's not whatever, I think one of our colleagues, uh, Kelly Collins Lentz, in her recent blog, she said that plan B stuff is, it's, it, it's stupid. <laughs> it's bull crap. Have a plan B. It's not a plan B. It's something to get you money while you're doing your plan A. Right, right. It's, I it's, mean, it's the same with, 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 with my studio. I worked a full-time yes. job and ran my studio at night until it got to the point. I did that for for over two years. Exactly. Probably most three of years. Us, most of us have yeah. several different outlets that we're doing. And to be quite frank, you know, millionaires have about seven different exactly. seven different outlets, you know, to become a millionaire. So we're on our way. Right, right. So have many outlets. Have as many as you want. Go in That's many right. paths. But don't and give go up while you're doing it. Don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. We hope this segment educated and inspired you.